Hey kids, it's Dresser James, I'm Dresser James Flames, looking at Centausaurus. So first and foremost, we're going to go over this animal, it's from China, discovered in the 1950s, and this is my first Centausaurus. If you go to uh, the link below, and my website, I have this as a picture of the animal actually, I'll let you know update it probably to this one. But the idea is that Centausaurus is it's a hadrosaur from China, from the late Cretaceous period. The big deal is, when you think of China Cretaceous, people often think about Liaoning with the feathered dinosaurs like Yu Tyrannus and Guanlong. Not one long, D long. And so this is from Lake Cretaceous, different, you know, later in time. So first and foremost, my first figure is a Collect A 2010 model. And this one is as accurate as that time shows. So Tintile Taurus is historically known as the unicorn dinosaur, unicorn hadrosaur, because the first specimen found and was identified at least, well, it was found in the 1950s, but identified in 58. They had this little, this straight piece of bone right here, the crest right there, right? And so, when compared to other hadrosaurs or duck-billed dinosaurs, they often have these weird trek crests and things there as well. So, with it just being this one forward-facing or near upward-facing bone, it was assumed that there were like some kind of a sac there, some kind of a air hollow resonating chamber attached to it. And that was the idea for the time, and that's why this is the first one I have, and it had that. Uh, moving forward, I have the Geo World. There's no year on this one, but it's Geo World. Also from it made in China, which is kind of ironic because the animal's from China and it's made in China. Uh, same thing, again, but without the sacks there. So, again, it, that's with speculation. Here we have, okay, let's at least go with the bare minimum. Now, big picture to point out here with Hadrosaurus, and this guy shows it somewhat. They actually both do it. So, they both have the signature four-digit hand. So, Hadrosaurus are lacking a thumb or a first toe. Uh, Unlike the iguanodons, they have like the, this, right? So the idea is that they have no toe, and they have the pinky there on the side, but then the three main fingers are in what's often called a mitten of skin. So when they first discovered hadrosaurs in general, in North, North America particularly, you know, there's always skin between the toes, so they were assumed to be like uh, like web toes for swimming and everything, which is why ducky and level for time is a water animal, basically, right? But it turns out that extra skin was not webbing, it was actually like a, a, a mitten encasing it, to, and it walked on like this, right? And so the big thing for me, for any hadrosaur toy, is to see if there are four fingers. There should be three bigger ones and one smaller one. Now this little guy, these guys, they're, they have four actual clawed finger digits, like, like, like our fingers in a sense, but less articulate. What you're looking for is a hoof-like structure, or like a, like a not a hoof, but um, or in case, which we're going to probably see in the, in the bigger model. Overall, like I said, with Hadrosaurus 2, they have three toes. And again, these are, and this is a weird thing to say, these are generic dinosaur toes. And what I mean is they're just three toes. Now, they're smaller, they're not, they have claws, but Hadrosaurus don't have sharp, long, pointy claws. They have like a hoof-like claw. So they do have that for the most part right. But again, it's not quite what we're looking for for this animal. So again, these two, I'm not throwing them out. They're just... The older design because some new stuff happened with the crest. You may notice the PNSO figure has a different crest. So on the name Centau Source, the T is silent. The idea is that it's actually from a region in China where it's first found. The uh, the name was translated over, basically, and Centau actually means uh, Greenland, which is why I, I don't think it's on purpose. Or maybe it is, but the fact that they're all green, I've never seen a non-green Centau Source. I will point out too that out of the Hadrosaurs, um, we don't. There's far more Parasaurolophus models than there are Centosaurus because in America we get more of our own species. So I was super excited to find this one here online, which is actually for Valentine's Day. So thanks to my wife. And with the official scissors of Jurassic James, we will be opening the PNSO figure. Now, if you remember, the PNSO figures uh, have names. Uh, Zequin, which is his name, it's a 135 scale model. Uh, in general, Centosaurus is, they've not found a complete skeleton. It's been estimated to be about 27 feet long, uh, some estimates up to 30, so it depends on, on which paper you're looking at. But again, it's a pretty big hadrosaur. And again, the box is there, there's all the behind the scenes stuff, a lot of writing on the side, you know, all that stuff here. So the first thing to do, you went to, it's already kind of been probably removed in, in shipping, the plastic covering. Then, wait for it, wait for it, wait, oh, did he just set it off after all? So, let's put this 
somewhere, not here. Let's just put that there, just a little, just, just, just to be the frame, just the frame right there. There you go. Okay, so of course it's a museum quality figure, so they often come with these little envelopes of cool stuff, uh, as if you want to set up a display. Oh, I like this. The the sticker is the the Centosaurus, uh the skull profile, basically. And to not break that, let's just let it, let's make it, let's do this. Let's let's do that slowly. Ah, there we go. So some of the stuff that comes with these guys or this guy is. A little book about the animal, and there's all these really cool pictures. There's a little glossary, well, but it's in white glossary there. You can see all kinds of information about it. And that's really cool, which and some stamps and things. Let's see, what do we have here? Nothing. Oh, can't, this is oh, for drawing. So they want you to, so you get these little papers here, so you can, I assume, practice drawing the uh, the creature, which. I do a lot of drawing if it is. Let's see, let's see. What, and these are all... I don't know what this is. These are envelopes of some sort. Let's, oh, that's what it is. Okay, so there's a poster. So there's a poster of Centosaurus hanging out with other Centosaurus. What I like is that the, the babies do not have to crash. I'm not familiar if they found baby Centosauruses. Actually, no, this is a Centosaurus. This is someone, this is someone else. It's a different, no, different Hatrosaurus. Actually, never mind. Let me check... There are other Hatchosaurus known from the site, which I don't have toys of. Oh, there's, there's, there's a Centosaurus right there. But I will point out the idea earlier I mentioned, I started, was that we, based on a uh, Hypacrosaurus in North America and Myosaurus, we look, we look at baby Hatchosaurus, they don't have the crest their adults have. And so the idea is that they would, of course, um, over time, develop them. So to give you a scale, here we have a scale to show you how big it is compared to our Ceratopsian. Well, I'm assuming, but I don't want to say it. Yes, Sinoceratops, which is nothing from Jurassic World. And then Cheetah and the Gavelle. So it's going to be all kind of fun facts. So that's why the museum quality figures uh, and PNSO come with all this extra stuff because, it, you know, just it's not just you're buying a toy or a model. It's really a model of a toy. There's your, you know, nice back right there. So, and as I go through more of this, there's a close up of the toy. That's, that's, that's really cool. It's like the care put into <laughs> wrapping, you know, not wrapping, but displaying this toy. So here's some of the other animals that are in the site, basically. So that's one thing uh, I don't have, I only have actually uh, since I'm source, but I don't really have any other, other animals from the site because one, I'm pretty sure if I do a trip to China, their toy stores will be, you know, fun and exotic. Uh, the example of this, I, I met a guy who actually has more dinosaurs than I do, and he lives in the Philippines and in, in, in Europe, old world, Asia. That, he goes around that area, so can he had different access, different toys than I do. So, um, but there were some I had that he did not have. So, my famous Tarbosaurus, the Tyrannosaur of the, of the East, right? And a lot of these pictures. And there's another hydrosaur. It's like three hours later. Oh, and again, our old friend Satakosaurus, because you can't go wrong with Satakosaurus. Talk about successful g genre species. Well, not species, genre. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And we have oh, a picture of my hand. Uh, so again, you can do three main, well, no pink, no, no, um, what do you call it? No thumb. The three main ones and then the little peek in the side. So I'm not lying to you. Uh, let's see. And then close up to the head. And again, the texture you're seeing, the picture, they actually do that on the model, from what I can tell. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done getting through the, uh, yeah, there's a skull, which is, this is a big thing. Well, actually, this is important. So, turns out, uh, you notice that the, this model has a more flat crest. Well, when you look at hadrosaurs like Corythosaurus or our old friend Parasaurolophus, these guys, the crests are actually like three different bones that are fused together. So, I don't know, some people, are, you know, you assume it's just one bone, but they're like, like this. So it turns out the part that we thought was just a crest by itself was actually, I would say, is actually this middle part right there. So, so there's one bone here, there's one bone there, and there's a middle one right there. So that was what we, they found on the initial specimen. So a paper in 2013 said, actually, no, we, you know, they found other parts where 
the other part of the crest connected. So it was like, okay, this is clearly showing signs of a, of a larger crest. So that's why the toy looks different, and that's why the pictures look different. So these are just the uh, the drawing cards. So that's fine. So if you're all drawing, you know. Okay, and what, what, what is this? This is more stuff? Is this more stuff? So a lot of pictures of this thing. Oh, okay. So here's the other, the way the large hydrosaur. Uh, so like there, we have Edmontosaurus in America, uh, North America. This is their Edmontosaurus equivalent. In China, this is... Oh, they're crossing a river. Look at that. They're crossing like like water beasts. Um, which we think how many dinosaurs are preserved. Or hadrosaurs are preserved. This is, okay, a similar thing going on there. Interesting enough. We are getting to the end of this. So this is uh, Sinoceratops. I'm guessing these figures from Panda said that the ones that are being depicted here are not museum scale. And there's are large Tyrannosaurus. Now, I have to get to the toy now. It's, it's even I'm being kind of bored. Let's see. So, we have this. And you remove the nice packing. And it's all about that base. So, the bases are important for bipedal toys. Um, I know, for example, my the review in last July on a rat, a rat, a Ratosaurus, these guys uh, had a little stand right there, but the stand small was like this. Uh, this is a on all fours of quadrupeds. I'm not sure why they gave it a stand, but so we're going to, which is kind of ironic how big the box is, and it's like this smaller figure. Because <laughs> this is, again, a very large, large hadrosaur. And so, so here it is. And I'll put it on the stand, I guess. So a close up for you, my friends. Uh, let's see, see, see this guy here. Now, like, if you look, like, you can see the skin. We, from my understanding, we don't have centosaurus uh, um, uh, skin impressions. I'm not sure about that, but I know we have hadrosaurus impressions. And in general, reptiles today, like many, many like snakes and lizards, squamata, their scales are like roof tile. There's one scale, and it overlaps like this, so it's kind of overlapping. For reptile, with dinosaur scales in general, they're more like um, floor tile, where they're, they're side by side. And hadrosaurus usually have very small scales. Now, again, the crest is very different than what we, we have seen historically, but again, we now know, or at least have evidence to believe, that this is the center of the crest, and there was other bony parts here, which is what you're seeing right here. Now, I mentioned before that the name Centaur implies uh, the, the translation of the translation means Greenland. So again, or, you know, not Greenland, like the, the country, but like Greenland, like Greenland place. And so you see that kind of pattern here. Now, one thing to point out the hands or the forelimbs, you can kind of see what I mentioned earlier, like the hoof-like, the hoof-like structure where it's very much uh, like, kind of like crushed together, like that not like stretch out fingers. The feet are, again, in general, hadrosaurus and one they have smaller feet than you would think. Um, but also, more importantly, is the, the how thick the neck is. And that has been a debate that I have no official personal opinion on, obviously. But the idea is that you would see these uh, what's called shrink wrap dinosaurs. You'll see, uh, let's see, none of, them, none of the ones I pulled out have that. <laughs> so you'll see it a hadrosaurus and have this very, you know, the, the vertebrae here. But then it's like the skin goes along that. But when you think about a cow or a horse or any large undulate today, uh, you know, the, the, the horse is here, but the neck goes like that. It's more muscles and stuff. And so we're seeing the same thing here. Now, with ceratopsians or horn dinosaurs, we think there's a more neck muscles because the neck muscles are there to help move the head around, obviously. But it's the same thing for hadrosaurs, too. So you're seeing that where historically, actually, this, this guy shows it. Historically, you would have seen this very much thinner neck. Here it's more thick and filled out, basically, with the muscles. So that's something that's really kind of cool because it's one of those, um, I'm not sure if it's a meme or whatever, but it's on, on all the social media. Well, it'll show a hippot hippopotamus skull, and you know what hippopotamus looks like today, but you show the skull, it these big saber teeth and everything like this, and they show all the, the paleo artist reconstruction of it, and it's like this gnarly looking gorgon looking thing, right? So this is what you're seeing here, it's kind of different now. Uh, one thing to do, we're going to compare it to some of its, uh, I wouldn't say wave mates, but its relatives. This is, of course, in China. This is a Lambiosaurus. I did a video on that one in July of last year, I believe, or 
or June. And so that be so again, the Alarmosaurus, uh, 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 which we swan. I did it, actually, I got the other three Hedgesaurus on the same time. But they're all PNSO, so you're seeing this here. So these are all what we call Lambiosaurine hadrosaurs. So there's the ones that are like the hadrosaurs, hadrosaurine, are the ones without the crest. And the Lambiosaurus are the ones with the crest, which are often more praised or attention paid to because they have these weird head structures. Uh, this is a Cretosaurus, which is upsetting for me because I opened it in July of last year. And it's been on my shelf, and for some reason it's not standing as well anymore. That's, that's always upsetting for me. But anyway, so you can get an idea that uh, as far as structural look goes, these are kind of very similar in design. And so hadrosaurs, I mean, again, their bodies for the most part are very similar. There are, of course, exceptions between species and features and all that, but to the average casual observer, they're very similar in, 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 their, in their form. And so let me lean them against that. And so, um, so again, I mean, no evidence before I say any further, but the idea that their, their, their patterns of their skin are very, very different. That was something that we can pretty much speculate, pretty, I would say speculate confidently, but the idea is that you want to, one, blend into your environment, so that's the first thing, but two, if you're a different species, you, you want to look different than other species, right? The whole point of this thing, other than, you know, is just reproducing more of your species, and one, it's a blend in to either evade predators, you know, not be seen, but also you want to have something different where you're looking for a mate and you're like, that's, you're not the same mate as me. No. So our species of mate. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're seeing here. Now I will, I don't have a penis of uh, Paris, Paris or Lophus, but I have the Jurassic World one here for the perspective on size and scale. Uh, this is the Edmontosaurus. There's two different, well, there's more than one, two species, but the, this is Regalius. So this is one that has this little thing here. Now this crest you're seeing here is this skin. So it's one of those things where the, the, the specimen is, it's, a beautiful specimen where it's like a flat slab of rock you see this little like comb like a, like a rooster's comb kind of thing but it's all soft tissue it's not bone at all the other Montosaurus and, and, and Tinas have nothing at all so that's what we're when you probably think of you think Montosaurus but these guys have bony crest so for example these bones the top port see how Parasaurus has this little kind of groove in its crest that's like there's two different bones in that area that are fused together so um, again, in life, will it have been that obvious? The, the fusing, probably not. But in general, you're seeing that when you when they first discovered the animal, they found only part of the crest. And that's the thing with paleontology is that we only have what we have, so we only find certain parts. And that's the thing that gets you to like a PhD level where you have this fragmented thing and you're able to look at it, measure it, see features, and then find other species around the world that match this and say, okay, it must be like this. And so that's why, again, in the last, well, the paper came out in 2020. So that's why all of a sudden you go from seeing Centosaurus like this to seeing it like that, because why? We realized that that little, that little unicorn horn was actually a core of a crest-like structure. Now, have they found the entire crest? Not that I'm aware of. I haven't seen anything saying that. But again, that's one of those things where you just keep digging. And people go, oh, well, that's you know, keep digging, such an easy, like, cop-out, but no, really, I mean, you find something, one or two of it, you find more of it, you find more compare, that's how you build your, your database, so, um, and of course, holotypes are always great, a holotype means you're the first of your species found and recognized by science, but the idea is that you need more specimens to compare it to, to understand better, because we're not just doing anatomy class, this is also, uh, pale, you know, uh, not even the ecology, looking at the biology of the animal, looking at its adaptation over time, and so that's why it's such a cool thing to tell the story about Centosaurus because this uh, this model, and again, my official uh, Jurassic James approval, this is the most complete one, or not complete, the most accurate Centosaurus I'm aware of right now. So if you're looking to buy one, get PNSO, here it is. That being said, I will see you next week with a different kind of video, but just, just hear me out.